Welcome to the No Spin News for Tuesday, July 2nd, 2024. Stand up for your country. So new CNN poll out a few hours ago. Um, you know, the polling, it takes a little time to catch up with the folks. Uh, but I think I'm going to read this one to you. Um, got some interesting things in it. 1,274 respondents, Democrat 29, Republican 30, Independent 40, fair. That's what we're looking for. First question, do you think Democrats have a better chance of winning the presidency in 24 if Biden is the nominee? Okay, better chance with Joe Biden, 25%. Better chance with anyone else (laughs) in the Democratic Party, you know, of note, 75%. So... It just goes along with what I've been telling you, and I'm going to get into that very specifically in a moment. Second uh, question, if the election were held today, would you vote for? Uh, Trump, 49 percent. Biden, 43. Other four. Do not plan to vote for. I think that's underrepresented. I think a lot of people are not going to vote. Uh, I could be wrong, but that's the impression I'm getting. And finally, is uh, Joe Biden a vote for him positive or is it a vote against Donald Trump? This, I love this question because this is right up my alley. I am voting for Joe Biden, the person. 37 <laughs> percent is the Democrats. I am voting against Trump. 63 percent. And I, you know, come on, everybody knows that. You know, some uh, scribes said if Nikki Haley were the nominee over Trump, she would win in a landslide. That's true. And I'm not disparaging Donald Trump, but he brings in high negatives. However, the Republican Party, the base, want Donald Trump, not Nikki Haley. The vote showed that. That is our democracy. Talking points memo, Biden's re-election chances. All right, fact-based. This separates me from almost everyone else uh, in the journalistic community, as Al Sharpton would say. Okay, I'm going to walk through this very slowly so that um, people in Portland, Oregon can understand. (laughs) Cheap shot of Portland, beautiful town, used to be anyway. All right. Joe Biden in uh, 2020 got 81 million, 284,000 votes, most of them anti-Trump votes. Um, Donald Trump received 73 million, more than any other Republican candidate ever, 224,000 votes. And Biden's tally was record breaking for Democrats. OK, my analysis is that Donald Trump could lose between 10 and 15 percent in this election. Why? Two reasons. Low turnout. I think people will stay home. And uh, a lot of people don't like them. They're fed up, whatever it may be. So some people voted for him before. It's enough with the the current trials, blah, 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 whatever. So let's say 12 percent he loses. That puts him about 67 million votes. Okay colossal amount of votes if he even loses 12 percent of his support from 20. Biden could lose 30 percent of his vote because he can't do the job. He's mentally diminished. So everyone knows that. And I think 30 percent might put their country above Joe Biden. That would bring him down to 57 million votes. So Trump would win by 10 million. I believe that is a fair scenario as it stands on July 2nd. Um, Real Clear Politics has the electoral vote count right now. Trump 219, Biden 198, uh, toss up 121, 270 needed to win. But just today there was a St. Anselm's poll in New Hampshire uh, that Biden had been running way ahead in the Granite State, says Trump has overtaken him. So I think that by any fair measure, the electoral vote situation in the so-called swing states will swing Trump's way. I put 
uh, Trump at about 319 electoral votes right now, a hundred more than real clear. And I don't think Biden, if he cracks a hundred electoral votes, he's going to win California and New York and Illinois. So that'll get him up around a hundred. Um, but I don't know. I, I can't, I can't see it. Um, so the betting odds, the gangsters, the bookies, they have Trump at 55.5% to win, Biden at 23% to win. Okay, that's where the bookies are. Now, if you vote on the presidential vote, if you bet on the presidential race, you're breaking the law, but of course, no one will prosecute or even look for you. So this Nate Silver gets a lot of ink. I don't have much use for this guy. Um, he is a pollster. All right, I'm going to be respectful, but he never impressed me as being particularly astute. So he says, quote, today, it's fundamentally a terrible idea to ask the public to make the guy they saw on the presidential debate until he's 86. One of the craziest asks in the history of American politics. And Trump likely wins close calls in the Electoral College. That's the swing states, according to Mr. Silver. So he's basically saying, look, uh, you're asking people to vote for a guy who's mentally diminished and everybody knows it. Now, why would anybody do that? Why would anybody put an incompetent president who's going to get worse above the good of the country. Well, the first reason is they'll say, no, Trump's worse for the country, even if Biden is in a jar. <laughs> but think about this. Biden is not running the government right now. He has nothing to do with the government. Unelected phantom people are running the government. Now, we gave you their names and everything, and all you have to do is go to BillOReilly.com and you can ha see it. I've done it three times now. Okay, it's his chief of staff, it's his counsel, it's his speechwriter. They're making the calls. And of course, Jill Biden is the most powerful person in the White House right now because Jill will not give it up. Now, what I reported on a Saturday is absolutely true. The Democratic establishment wants Joe out. They've decided he cannot run. That's what I reported. Okay, and that's absolutely true. And the only reason he isn't out yet is because Jill Biden, tells him not to, and Joe Biden does everything that Jill Biden tells him to do. But let's get back to the voters. So I know some Biden voters, and I don't hector them. That's not fair. I mean, you vote your conscience, right, if you're a loyal American. But once in a while, a conversation will roll around to, and it's always Trump is worse, 100% across the board, always. But then I say, look, you are voting to put yourself and your family and this country in danger, actual danger, because you can look back at how Trump uh, ran the country in four years and we weren't in wars and we had low inflation and he did get a vax up and running fast. Now you're putting the country in danger, actual danger. OK, and there's always silence on that. They, they never come back with any. And the final reason is people don't want to admit a mistake. You know them. Maybe you're sitting one, next to one right now. They'll never admit they made a mistake, ever. That, that's a contagion in America now. Never make a mistake. And so they won't backtrack on it. But I, I'll tell you what, in my lifetime, I've never seen a more dangerous situation than what we have now in the November boat. Because Joe Biden cannot run this country. He's not going to make a comeback. He's going to get worse. And the progressive movement loves that because he and his aides push that progressive agenda all day long. And that's a memo. All right. So Biden today gives remarks on extreme weather. I wonder if he has a little board and a, and a marker. I, I don't know. Is there a front coming in we should know about? Then he goes to McLean, Virginia, right over the Potomac and raises money. That's all he does all day. He hasn't done anything this week so far for the people. Uh, yesterday, uh, after the Supreme Court ruling, it said, look, um, presidents have immunity when they make decisions uh, while they're in office. Because if you 
didn't have that immunity, you couldn't govern. You'd be sued every day, every hour on the hour for something. And that's essentially what the Supreme Court ruled. Okay, And now it goes back to the lower courts to find out if there are any guidelines about what's uh, on the docket on professionally and what is personal. Okay, so that's where it is. So the far left didn't like it. That means Joe Biden didn't like it. So they parade Biden out. Roll the tape. Today's Supreme Court decision, once again, it will depend on the character of the men and women who hold that presidency that are going to define the limits of the power of the presidency, because the law will no longer do it. I know I will respect the limits of the presidential power as I have for three and a half years, but any president, including Donald Trump, will now be free to ignore the law. And that's just propaganda. And uh, a lot of people say, well, why do you even bother? Two reasons. Uh, the White House desperately trying to show he's a strong leader in charge. So he read the prompter for five minutes. And all well, the press was there and they want to ask him questions. He didn't answer any questions. And then to motivate the Trump haters even more. OK, because that's all they got. We hate Trump. He's the devil. He's Hitler. He's this. He's that. That's it. That's all they have. Everything is expensive these days, you know that. The government is printing trillions of dollars in consumer prices higher than ever. If the government continues its printing and spending, the dollar could continue its free fall and lose its coveted role as the world reserve currency. Let's hope that doesn't happen. But there are a few things you can do right now. American Hartford Gold can show you how to protect your money your retirement, your hard-earned savings against inflation by helping you diversify a portion of your portfolio into physical gold and silver. Start with a short phone call, and they can have physical gold and silver delivered right to your door or put inside your 401k or IRA. So please call or text them right now. Tell them Bill O'Reilly sent you. Call 877-444-GOLD. 877-444-GOLD, or text GOLD to 65532. Again, that's 877-444-GOLD, or text GOLD to 65532. All right, let's go to the mail. We got Dan O'Brien, Cameron, North Carolina, where Biden's comments about the Supreme Court meant to undermine the authority of the court. Now, Biden, as I said, wanted to appear robust and in charge and he wanted to rally the progressives. They hate Trump people. That's why he did it. Didn't answer any questions. <laughs> you know, of course not. Why would he? Michael, I do not believe President Biden is dropping out of the race. He would have done so a long time ago. Furthermore, one can speculate all they want, but I won't believe it until I see and hear it from old Joe's lips. Okay. You might be right. I might be wrong. Place your bets now. Barry Miller, Fort Myers, Florida. So if Joe Biden drops out, is it still possible for Donald Trump to achieve a victory on election night? Would any other Democrat beside Michelle Obama beat Trump, in your opinion? Possible. It's possible. Not probable. Because it will take the Democratic candidate a long time to get known but it's all about the hate Trump vote, whether Donald Trump can tamp that down. Garrett Klein conquered North Carolina. Hey, Bill, recently talked to my coworker who said even after the debate, he'd vote for Biden no matter what. When I asked him to name a pre-COVID policy that was bad for the country, he could not answer. Yeah, OK. Just hates Trump. That's never going to end. My liberal friends, too. Not all of them, but a lot of them. David Z, Tokyo, Japan. I heard interviews with voters in Atlanta after the debate. One voter said, I will still vote for Biden because I have to vote the same way as my community. Sounds like an African-American. Could be wrong. Sure, there's a lot of peer pressure. Absolutely peer pressure all over the place. But on the other side, too, David, there's a lot of peer pressure on the right. You say something that goes against... Some conservatives, they attack you. 
Kevin McDaniel, Las Vegas. I listen carefully to your analysis, O'Reilly, of the current Biden situation. You are spot on regarding the Democratic hierarchy, K Street, and the corrupt media moguls. I wonder when and how did we, the people, relinquish our rights to elect our own leaders? Media is powerful, but not influential. Isn't that an interesting statement? It's powerful because it still holds a television signal. And it still prints newspapers. But most Americans, Kevin, they don't believe it anymore. Karen Porter, Reno, Nevada. If, and I say if, President Obama removes himself from the election, what happens to the 197 million he's collected through campaign donations? Goes to the Democratic Party because those donations aren't going to President Biden. They're going to the political action committees supporting him. So it's not, that, that's why he's still out raising money. Because if he's not there, it goes to whoever takes his place. Frank Kuhl, uh, New York City. My question is, don't you think it would be foolish for Trump to do a second debate if Biden stays in? I don't know. I don't know. I'd have to see what the run up to the debate is. Certainly, ABC News will be tougher on Biden, on Trump, I should say, than CNN was. That's a given. Uh, I think he'd have to take, Trump would have to take a look at the polling and decide, but he'd take a hit if he doesn't show up. Okay? Trump will take a hit if he does not show up. Ty Work, Huntington, West Virginia. The first words out of your mouth for your special broadcast on Friday were that you promised to give the best post debate analysis. 100% you lived up to your promise. You are the master. Well, I appreciate that, Ty. I mean, we brag, but we back it up. I think we do. All right. I'm going to give you now a preview of uh, what is likely to be a blockbuster seller on BillOReilly.com in the store. It's a brand new mug, and here it is. Ready? The mug says, a cup of no Joe. <laughs> hey, it's a navy and burgundy. A cup of no Joe. This is a collector's item for the ages. Where do you see how this explodes? So get them while we have them. Okay? A cup of No Joe mugs on BillOReilly.com. We also have for six more days the best concierge membership deal we have ever had. Become one, a member, or re-up. You get the membership, a not woke mug, and any book of your choice free. I can only do it five more days. Sunday is the last day. That is phenomenal deal. That is the best I can do. And I got to take it off because we can't afford to keep it on any longer. And finally, confronting the presidents out September 10th, uh, about 50,000 already sold advance. And the book uh, is more than uh, September 10th, as I said. But if you pre-order on BillOReilly.com, you'll get it first. Word of the day, do not be a poppin' J. That might be the first word of the day I ever used on Fox. Poppin' J, P-O-P-I-N-J-A-Y. Back with a final thought in a moment. In today's economic climate, many face the challenge of managing monthly expenses, and high credit card interest rates can keep you trapped in a cycle of debt. Paying the minimum each month means delaying becoming debt-free. Reach out to American Financing, a trusted partner in achieving financial freedom. If you are a homeowner, they can tap into your home's equity to help eliminate your high interest credit card debt. On average, their customers save $854 a month. That's equivalent to a $10,000 raise at work. You could close your loan in 10 days. By acting today, you might not have to pay your next mortgage payment. It costs nothing to see how much you can save. So regain control of your finances. Call 888-462-9557. 888-462-9557. Or visit AmericanFinancing.net slash bill. By now you have heard me talk about Delta Rescue. They are a fantastic organization that helps rescue animals from the wilderness. 
You know I'm a dog lover, so is Leo Grillo, the founder of Delta Rescue. It is his life's mission to provide everlasting care for these once abandoned animals. I myself have donated to Delta Rescue. Do you believe it is part of man's duty to care for dogs and horses, the animals that so much of our history is tied to? If so, please consider making a donation or consult your advisor about leaving a gift in your will or trust. There can be some tax advantages, and it's a great way to help Delta Rescue accomplish their mission. So please visit DeltaRescue.org to learn more. That's DeltaRescue.org. All right, final thought of the day. We are uh, closing the store until Monday. I got to give my folks a break. We've been working really hard, as you know. So if Biden drops out, we'll be, I'll do a special. I'll come back. But um, we are going to uh, pick it on up again Monday. I'll have a Sunday column. And uh, in the meantime, I'm going to the beach. Going to go to the beach. Big umbrella. No sun. And I got three books I'm reading. First one is Cleat by my favorite fiction author, James Lee Burke. The man is 87 years old. And he still turns out unbelievable prose. It's incredible. Second one is a book called Don't Let the Devil Ride by Ace Atkins, a thriller. And Atkins has been around and he knows how to write these books. See, on the beach, I want just a fast read. And the third one is Don Winslow's City on Fire. Uh, he's got three of those City on books. Winslow, like Atkins, a tremendous storyteller. So I'm going to read those books on the beach. I'm going in the water. Okay? I'm going a little chilly on eastern Long Island, but I'm going in. Um, and I'm going to read the books, and I'm going to have some fun, big Fourth of July blast and all that. And I want you to do the same. All right? You deserve a break. We all deserve a break, particularly in the madness in which we live. But it's all going to work out. I told you something big would happen. Remember? Something big's going to happen. O'Reilly said it and said it and said it, and something big did in the debate. And now it's going to play out. And I think I know how it's going to play out, but we are on it. I hope you are enjoying our reporting here, because we're working our butts off to bring you the best information we can possibly bring you. I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thank you for watching. Have a great Fourth of July. We'll see you on Monday. Thank you for watching the No Spin News. To watch the full episode anytime on BillOReilly.com, please sign up to become a premium or concierge member. Visit BillOReilly.com to sign up and start watching today.